All of our work to date in Excel has been done in what's called normal view. At some point you may be required or you may wish to use one of the other two views for your sheet, which is page break preview and page layout preview. Now these two options are very useful if you're looking at trying to control the printed version, whether that's printed to paper or printed to PDF. Let's take the employee's D file as an example. If we go to print preview, this wants to use 12 pieces of paper. And we've seen how we can try and make some control of that by adjusting the margins using the little scale to fit. If we change the view instead by going to the view ribbon and changing into the page break preview, you'll see that we have a dotted line between each page. So I've got page one there, page two below, page three below that. Then we go five, six, seven. Now the idea behind page break preview is that you can manually adjust where the pages are breaking. That's what these dotted lines are for. So if I were to take this page break preview line here and drag that right to the right hand side, you'll find that it adjusts the print now and we are reduced to six pages. Now the split is not very even for my mind and you can see that better in print preview, but there seems to be more on these left hand pages than there is on the right hand pages, but that's fine. We can adjust that internal gap, this line here, we can grab that and drag it across so it's sort of more equidistant. So that way we're putting columns A to K on the first three pages and then the columns L to T on the right hand columns. Now notice that that end column is not actually being used, so we could save even more space by actually dragging in the edge of the printing. And you can see then column T is not now included in our print area. We can adjust the horizontal page break as well. That's breaking here and it's only putting about seven or eight lines on the next page. Well, I don't need that bottom one because there's no data in it. And then the two joins in between, I could take that dotted line and drag it to the bottom. And I've now forced the input to fit onto four pages. And again, print preview to see what that looks like. And it sort of looks okay. Perhaps there's too much on the secondary pages, but I can then take the join here and drag that down a bit more. So that's page break preview. Now, personally, I wouldn't use it for what we've just done, which is to adjust the right hand side, the left hand side, the bottom. I would use it for just adjusting in one column. You might find that one column at the right keeps being missed out and being used on a whole new page, which is causing you to use four or five new pages of paper. You can come into page break preview and effectively drag that right hand side in a little bit. So you take your mouse to them and drag. And that then forces column L to be on this left hand set of pages instead of the right hand set of pages. And the same with the horizontal split there. That row is then moved onto that page and that row is moved onto that page. You can still work on this view, so you can still go into the cells and make changes and add formulas, etc. But personally, once you've used it to do what you want it to do, which is to adjust the page breaks, I would go back to normal and then work in normal. The other view, which is quite useful, is the page layout view. So again, this is on the view ribbon as well page layout, and you'll see here, we can actually see the headers and the footers. So we can see the header at the top and the footer at the bottom, and we can actually not just see them, but edit them. Once you're into one of the boxes, you'll see you get a context sensitive ribbon, header and footer tools, design. Here are the same options that you get that you saw when we went through the dialog box to do the header and the footer. We can insert the number of pages, the date, the time, the file path, etc. So if I wanted to scroll down, and put the file path into the footer. There's my footer into the left hand footer box. Header and footer tools design, insert file path. And it inserts the little field mark as we've seen before, ampersand path, ampersand file. When I click out of the header and footer box, it puts in the full path and I can go to print preview to see that is on every page. So it's another way of controlling your headers and footers using the view, page layout view. Obviously you can still enter cells, make changes, add formulas, adjust column widths. You can see the left hand side here, you can see the top and you can access the header and footer options. I would use it only for header and footer options, perhaps adjusting the margins at the left here, just like that. And then go back to normal for doing your everyday working in the cells.